All right, Gasaholic, say what you got to say. All right, I'm uh, Jerry Birch. I'm Joy Birch. We're the Birch Brothers. And we're Gasaholics. <laughs> well, I want to hear about the Freebird. Hear How about the Freebird? Free bird. How'd it come along? Well, the Freebird come about, but uh, basically it was a way to scratch the southeast gasser's itch until we got a, a tribute car built. Started out, bought a car, we're gonna make it uh, tribute car for one like my daddy and his partner had in the 60s to run sea uh, gas. It was the B&H Racing Unitwister, Chevy too much. And took that first car to Quain, and it had a lot of modern chassis parts, four length, narrowed nine inch, coilover shocks. Took one look at it and he said, all right, you gotta cut all that out. I was like, uh. I, see, I figured I'd cross that bridge when I got to it. Maybe I could, there was some wiggle room. <laughs> but yeah. as you know with Quain, there ain't no wiggle, ain't no wiggle room. room. That's right. <clears throat> it was, I guess it was, it was a pretender like yours. Yeah. <laughs> I call him the wheel Jesus. Wheel Je <laughs> if you got a question about a wheel, call Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you exactly when it come out. He can probably give you the exact date. I was basically going to have to cut out just about all the chassis on that one. Found this other one. Uh, it still had a bunch of work. It needed to be done. The guy that had it for me, he was planning on running with the uh, mm. Southeast Gassers, and uh, he had like a blower motor in it. Uh, front end was moved forward about four inches. So now that one, Quain did go look at. That's what I, that's, that's that, what I that's, thought you were talking about. Yeah. And I said, well, it, would it be uh, a lot closer to being done? He was like, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> a lot closer. But closer don't mean close. It just means you closer. Yeah. Joy's had to touch about everything on it. I mean. So basically you started with nothing. A little bit At least further you got from action. nothing than, than, than the other one. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me about this paint job on the Freebird. What, did did y'all pick this up? We did not. That, uh, that was already there when we first got the car. Couldn't really see Freebird. Um, Joy was about to quit. Chantilly lace on it. He said, I ain't working on no car with no Chantilly lace on it. <laughs> we pulled that modern graphics off. Still see the free bird and he taped it off and painted it up. So what you done is you just took the name that was before Chantilly lace. Mm -hmm. you, the, there's no history in the name Freebird except the history of the car was Freebird beforehand. Right. It's period correct. It's period correct. I mean, it's, you got the lace, you got the metal flake. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's, yeah. it's screaming correct. Yeah. Screaming correct. <laughs> screaming it. <laughs> uh, more like flaming. <laughs> Last time I seen that much glitter, I was at a Liberace concert with my boyfriend. Well, how y'all fellas think I'm doing on these interviews? Yeah, let's just move on to the next question. Tell me um, some of the memories that y'all had of uh, your daddy's racing and, and really where, how it got in your blood and what made you decide after all these years to get back into racing? Well, uh, in, in some of the other interviews we've done and whatnot, it's, we can remember as kids, we would go to Shadyside and, and during the practice part of it, Carlos and daddy would ride together and there's no back seat in it. So we would get in the back of the car and hold onto the row bar <laughs> and go down the track. Yeah. That'll never happen in this day and time. <laughs> yeah. But back then, that was the norm. And that... safety was a little bit. Less. Yeah, lenient, more lenient back then. A little, a little more. They didn't lights. have little helmets no. back then either. No. Huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> but to be a child and yep. to see that is, I mean, that's that stays with you for the rest of your life. You're, yep. you're going to remember that. Yep. And so. both of y'all done it at the same time. Well, no, actually, I never got to ride in the Unit Twister. He got to ride in the Unit Twister. Whenever I got hooked is years later, Daddy had his own car. It was a Superstock car. And what was it? It was a 67 Camaro. Uh, Highway headlights. RSSS 350 car. Yeah. Well, a full-fledged drag car. Right. Yeah. But he had put a 302 in it and would turn like a chainsaw. And, uh, of course, George was a little bit older, so he got the 
riding a passenger seat. I was hanging on to the roll bar. <laughs> but, I mean, that gave me the perfect view of it. You look like a little baby when you do the roll bar. I was, I mean, you know, but I had a bird's eye view and, you know, whenever he speed shifted, whole body shook. Yep. And, you know, back then. Like I say, you, you, it's something, I mean, when you're a kid, you never forget that. That's the most awesome thing in the world. Yep. Is um, either one of y'all ever been in any, involved in any kind of street racing? No. Of course not. No, okay. <clears throat> not like them hoodlums in finger. Didn't race. you tell me a story about your daddy said if you're going to race, go to the track? Mm -hmm. Yep. Said if he ever caught us racing on the street. Oh, okay. No. He'd never build another motor for us or anything. Yep. He was dead against he, that. He didn't like that at all. Dead yep. set against that. I can understand that. These day and time especially. Now. What is the difference between you, or y'all, and the rest of the Southeast Gassers? I know what the difference is. You got him, and I got nobody. I borrow him every once in a while. <laughs> you had him for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the difference. Then you thought the grass the was greener right on the other side yeah. and you found out. Yeah, the, that, yeah, the difference, yeah. the difference <laughs> is, is it's the Birch <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> As in, with an S on the end, not one, <laughs> you know. And I have found, I have actually snuck in here at night. I don't know why I was looking in the window, but Joey be here rubbing on the car. <laughs> I mean, he, his wife works out of town a lot, and he ain't got nothing to do but sit down here and drink and talk to this car. So I know we why. A lot. Huh? We talk a lot. That's a lot. We talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. They call it them whispering sweet nothing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's taking care of that while you up with the family. So tell me, what all are you running in the in the Freebird? A lot of the motor stuff that Daddy used when he built this last motor is, uh, I mean, it we we get the weight break for the cast iron heads and. Um, what kind of heads are they? They the uh, two ninety two Winston iron. Cup five fourteen gear J and E pistons, Gorilla rods. I, we just uh, want to give a shout out to our sponsors. We really appreciate them. Uh, first one that came on board there was uh, a good friend of mine, Jim Odom. He owns uh, ABC Ab Abrasive Blasting and Coating Services. Grill 221, uh, they're friends of ours. They, uh, they run a, a grill right here in Roebuck. They we might have to head over in just a minute. We, I think we should. Uh, definitely. A couple more shout outs. Uncle, Stan Uncle Stanley, Uncle, Uncle Stanley, Stanley yeah. and Diane <coughs> Waldrop. Uh, Waldrop. They uh, they came to like five races. Y'all's biggest fans. I think Probably so. so. Yeah. We have a good time with them. Yeah. They do. I know one. I know somebody that you'd want to thank. Jesus Christ. I do. I do. We all feel the same way about that. That's right. They, <coughs> he blessed us with a father that was. One of the best around at this, blessed us with a mother that always took us to the track yeah. with him. So we got hooked on it early age. Uh, our wives were blessed, you know, with them. They support us in this. Uh, my kids, my girls, you know, I always love it when they can uh, come to a race. So who are we going to call out? Mm. <clears throat> Well, after your, I pretty much call it fiction video, because there's a lot of, well, I mean, if you was running for political office, the fact checkers would have been, went crazy. Yeah, I mean, right. like. Well, I had to admit that I was just so happy that in Myrtle Beach that I was winning races that I actually forgot who I was running. Yeah. You know, we do have the proof over there. You did outrun me. Well, speaking of lunch, why don't we get up and go to Grill 221 and eat some of that best burgers on the highway? Sounds like good to me. All right. Let's go. go. Let's do it. <clears throat> So what, what do you think about the rules for the Southeast Gas? I mean, I, I, I think you have to have them that way for us to be differentiated from all that. This is how it was back in 1967. That's what makes it so close. Yeah. Yep. If he wasn't so strict with the rules, the racing wouldn't be as close as it is. People wouldn't be as interesting. 
So Actually, I, I wouldn't even go to a race before this came along. I mean, and then I went one time, and I was hooked, you know. I was, trying to, I was trying to buy a free bird the first day. <laughs> I probably should have done that. <clears throat> In hindsight. Yeah, hindsight. I mean, we come from when Daddy used to run at Shady Sign. They used to put rosin down through it, and he had a flag. Yeah, they didn't have a Christmas tree. They gave somebody flag. Just like us in Myrtle Beach. Yep, exactly. I love that. Exactly. I mean, that was probably when it was at its simplest and its best. The best thing I liked about Myrtle Beach is that I didn't have the bad report card from the Christmas tree. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I just paid attention. As a matter of fact, I even had Joey coach me over there. You pay attention to that guy who's got that flag. He's going he to make some kind of move before he drops that flag. <laughs> telling you it don't get no better than that <clears throat> you know we have a a, uh, a picture somewhere whenever uh, the bonafide was here nursing off of uh, the free bird <laughs> you yeah. know, early on yeah that's yeah. right that's right uh, I think uh, that's Brad the day, I, that's the day I had to buy the beer for Joey yeah, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> then Greer, you know, that uh, maybe they don't get out truth, of that. They don't get out of that. Truth of that, but I, mean, I pooped my I pants when I done it. I, you understand? I, when I look back and you was behind me, I pooped my pants. Okay. I'll be honest with you. Well, I mean, I, that, that was that was the best. That was years. a highlight of my career. That was two years though. It don't matter. Do it don't matter if it, just like you, just like Joey told me, it don't matter what you do as long as you're the first one down there. <laughs> But that's what he said. That's what he said. It don't, a, that's it don't matter that Alley Cat left a rag on his carburetor. <laughs> it don't matter. He said, as long as you're the first one there, that's all that matters. And by God, go ahead and admit it. Who was the first one there? At Greer? Yeah. You were. All right, then. So you have been outrun by the Roebuck Rambler. Am I, am I right? Am I right? With two gears and practice run, you There ain't no excuses, Joey. <laughs> Tell him ain't no excuses. We'll give Next you a thing, Freebird t-shirt. You might have to cut the neck to get your head down. I there. know. We'll it. get you one. <laughs> and don't think I won't wear it, neither. But we got to go back to another thing. You know, you said you loved the high tower transmission. Well, look here. I'm going to tell you something about that. You didn't even get yours from here. And you this got is, yours on now, the black look market. Here. Now, y'all know this is true. Y'all know this is true. I sold a Trans Am just to buy that, just to make the down payment on that uh, that used transmission. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the flea market and get mine. I hate to say it, you know. But, but when it came to the warranty work, I had to go to the man and face up that I didn't get a new one. But it's still he's he's done us right. But you got to admit he does, yeah. he's done he's done us I right. Mean, he's, he does. <clears throat> but you got to be careful about talking that junk. I know. Because if you talk too much of it <laughs> and you make Paige mad enough, <laughs> as we saw. This past year, you might get her mad enough to where she gets a t-shirt made. That's right. And it shows up in Victory Lane. The ghost. You can ask Dean and the gray ghost. Yeah. Show us where all this got started at. Come on. Okay, this building next door is a shop where our dad started working on cars and race cars and eventually turned it into an auto parts place and added on a couple of bays and a shed where we'd have more room to work on cars. And the Blue Street, it's kind of like the racing ignition of the day is all copper points. Of course, don't have, really have points distributors anymore, but... Uh... Wait a minute. Where's Bonafide at? That's a lathe that he used to do drive shafts on. Yeah, so south bend, leather belt drive. Uh, it's got an extremely long bed on it, and he would cut drive shafts. We can pretty much fabricate and make anything we need, custom made, one off. This is going to be the tribute car, the B&H Racing. Uh, we never get time to work on it. Uh, we didn't have a pipe mender or nothing, and we spend a lot of time working on the Freebird. I can't be really separated from the Freebird, but may have it as a tribute and uh, 
Maybe see if the Dixie Twister wants to match race some. You know, have it at the local tracks. Sure not gonna take two cars with us to, you know, the far off track, but maybe the local ones. Tell us what happened here. Well, this is uh, basically, uh, you can probably, that's probably be a good souvenir for you. That might be the only reason you got close to me. Uh, beating me or winning? <laughs> you reckon I ain't hanging on my wall? You can hang it on your wall. You could at least spray. You, you got so least... excited when we was talking about it. Over well, you there. could at least spray paint it to gold or something. No, uh, I'll let you do that. Well, tell us what it happened. Ain't, it ain't too golden of a memory for me. <laughs> it's yep. an expensive little. Tell us what happened here. This was in Myrtle Beach, right? That was in Myrtle Beach, basically. Um, and this is all that's left. That's all that's left. Here's the, that's the center, basically tore the center out of the clutch. That's where those four rivets go. And basically it, uh, they, they had sprayed the track real good. It was, Myrtle Beach was hooking real good and it launched, toted the wheels out there. Hit second, it was okay. Went to third, there was nothing. And, and, and you did outrun me on this run, right? Yeah, I think that's when the, that's when I crossed the line. Yeah, I, I was a mistake. I was just a happy. I was yeah, winning. Yeah, that's when you about hit the camera and all that. And... Ernie Smith, I'm calling you out. I know that you're only one of two people that uh, say they beat the Freebird, but I want to see how you can do it with uh, all four gears instead of just two and a half. We ain't scared. A no free bird, do you understand?